I'm Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist, University of Missouri Extension. Today we're going to discuss dormant sprays for fruit plants. Now, integrated pest management begins during the dormant season, and actions taken during the dormant season can pay dividends later on from the standpoint of managing many insect and disease pests of fruit plants in Missouri. Why is the dormant season such an important time from the standpoint of integrated pest management? Well, first of all, there are many fruit, insect, and disease problems that have life stages that are vulnerable to control during this time of the year. For example, there are a number of diseases that overwinter as a spore on the surface of a branch or a twig. We also have insect and other arthropod pests that overwinter as eggs. Both of these stages can be quite vulnerable to dormant season applications of pesticides. We have several insect and disease pests where the dormant season is by far the most effective time to control. A good example would be peach leaf curl on peach. And you always keep in mind from the standpoint of integrated pest management that effective control during the dormant season can set the stage for lower levels of inoculum later on during the growing season. In other words, fewer instances of infestations or infections during the growing season if we do a good job of managing these problems during the dormant season. The next series of slides will discuss the arthropod pests and disease issues that are vulnerable to management during the dormant season. And let's start with tree fruits and let's start with uh, arthropod pests. First of all, mites of course can be a problem on all fruit trees and dormant season control can be quite effective against mites, particularly the overwintering stages of mites. San Jose scale and other pests across many types of tree fruits is effectively managed by a dormant season application of pesticide, which targets the adult overwintering stage of the uh, insect. Rosy apple aphid and paracilla similarly are controlled through the use of dormant season applications. Let's briefly discuss arthropod pests of small fruits that are managed during the dormant season. First of all, on grape, grape flea beetle in particular can be very damaging to the developing buds. This pest, along with climbing cutworm, can be effectively managed with dormant applications of insecticides. Raspberry crown borer attacks both raspberries and blackberries. And aerified mites, which cause the distortion of leaves and uh, the loss of blossoms and fruit, as we can see in this photo. All of these pests are managed through the use of delayed dormant applications of insecticides. Now let's turn our attention to diseases of tree fruits that can be managed with dormant season applications of fungicides and bactericides. These diseases include fire blight of apples and pears, apple scab of apple, bacterial canker of cherry, and cherry leaf spot. Among peach diseases, peach leaf curl, shot hole, and bacterial spot can all be managed entirely or in part through the use of dormant season fungicide applications. Dormant season is a particularly important time from the standpoint of management of several small fruit diseases. These diseases include black rot, fomopsis, and anthracnose of grape, fomopsis, phytophthora root rot of blueberry, and anthracnose, cane blight, spur blight, and phytophthora root rot of brambles. Now that we've discussed the arthropod and disease issues of interest from the standpoint of dormant season pesticide applications, where do we find information on specific sprays and specific timing? Well, that information is found in the Midwest Fruit Pest Management Guide. This guide is revised every two years. The uh, online version is available at the website on the slide as a downloadable PDF. The guide is also available as a print edition. The online guide is revised periodically. The guide includes sections on all the major fruit crops that are grown commercially in Missouri. Now that we discuss timing, at least in theory, a dormant season application could go on to a fruit plant any time from the, uh, the cessation of growth in the fall to when buds begin to break and grow in the spring. And that's kind of a, a long period of time. But in reality, timing is much more specific. The first thing to think about is that many sprays have the potential to damage the actively growing parts of a fruit plant if they're applied too late in the spring. In other words, these sprays are most effective when they're applied to the fruit plant before there's the presence of green tissue 
or flower buds, which could be damaged by the sprays. Secondly, there are periods of time where the target pests, either an arthropod pest or a disease, are most susceptible to control. Uh, for example, in the case of fungicides, we typically apply dormant sprays based upon the growth stage of the fruit crop. You know, looking at this picture here of a dormant blueberry shoot, this would be an excellent stage at which to apply a lime sulfur or a sulfuric spray because there's no green tissue present that would be damaged by the, uh, the uh, potential phytotoxic effect of that spray. In the case of dormant oil, timing is, is again based upon growth stage, but with dormant oil it's typically applied as close as possible before buds actually begin to break and grow in the spring. And this is because dormant oil acts as a spray that smothers pests that may be found on, on fruit plants during the dormant season. And so these pests tend to be most susceptible to management with dormant oil just before bud break. So when we apply a dormant oil spray, it's very important to apply it as a uniform, complete coverage. In other words, after the spray is applied, it should be applied to the point of runoff and the tree should be shiny and, and it should be easy to see where the oil was applied. Now, dormant oil should be sprayed when there is a minimum predicted period of time of at least 24 hours before temperatures will drop below freezing. In other words, find a period of time where the next few days after the application, the, the temperatures are going to be warmer. It's also uh, the best scenario when dormant oil sprays are applied and allowed to dry completely before there's any rain. Arthropod pests, on the other hand, the sprays are typically applied based upon timing related to the growth stage of a life stage of the pest. For example, with San Jose scale, as we see here in this picture, the uh, dormant oil spray would be applied as close as possible to bud break because that's the period of time where the scale, which is present uh, during the dormant season, is most susceptible to smothering. So in the case, again, of arthropod sprays, these are typically applied based upon the life stage of the pest. It's important to mention a cautionary note related to dormant season uh, pesticide applications. There may be cases where a grower intends to spray both dormant oil and a lime sulfur sulfuric spray on the, uh, a particular fruit crop. And if this is the case, it's very important to separate these sprays by at least 14 days. If these sprays are applied too close together, there is the risk of phytotoxic damage to the tree uh, that, that will become evident later on in the growing season. So be sure to allow that two week interval between the application of a dormant oil spray and a lime sulfur or sulfuric spray. For more information on the use of dormant sprays on fruit crops, reach out to your area horticulture field specialist. This map shows the territories of the field specialists here in Missouri. Identify your county and, and reach out to the specialist that has responsibilities for your county. If you live in a county that has an open position, reach out to a specialist that's close by. I'm sure they'll be able to help. This is Patrick Byers, Horticulture Field Specialist with the University of Missouri Extension.